Vermeer is, it's, for me personally, it's one of my favourite paintings. It's difficult to say that, you know, about a painting, but it is one of my favourite paintings because I remember it as a school child. I remember seeing it. I remember it was illustrated in my book, in my art book. And then I remember coming in and seeing it in the National Gallery and, and being really blown away that here on the wall in front of me was this famous painting that I had seen in reproduction. Well, Vermeer was a uh, 17th century Dutch artist from a place called Delft in the Dutch Republic. And he was working uh, at a time during a period that we normally refer to as the Dutch Golden Age, which is a kind of, um, let's call it a, a Dutch equivalent of the Celtic Tiger. And during that Dutch Golden Age, uh, several uh, artists flourished, including Vermeer, but all, it, it all happened in a way during a number of decades during the middle of the 17th century. In 1672, which is during the last years of Vermeer's life, basically the Celtic Tiger, the Dutch Celtic Tiger is over and the whole country in a way is, is brought on its knees and a lot of artists go bankrupt. His wife essentially gave the painting away to the baker, to the local baker after Vermeer's death, because the couple had a, a debt with the baker for about 600 guilders. So his, his, his widow paid it off with two paintings by Vermeer. So it, how, how was the painting received? Well, probably very few people saw it. Very few people, yeah. No one is quite sure what Vermeer's local baker made of the painting, but centuries later it arrived here in Rusborough House in West Wicklow, when Sir Alfred and Lady Bite brought their priceless collection of international art to Ireland. For many years, the jewel in the crown of their extraordinary collection hung in pride of place at Rusborough. The painting is, of course, probably most famous in Ireland because it was stolen and recovered not once, but twice during the 70s and 80s. My understanding is that there are or close to 36 uh, Vermeers in total. And when the Vermeer was hanging on this wall for many years, up until the light, late 1980s, my understanding is that there were only two in private hands. All the others were in museums around the world. And the two in private hands were the Queen of England hanging in Buckingham Palace and the Vermeer on this wall. This Vermeer, as it were, the Rusper Vermeer, is now in the National Gallery of Ireland for the benefit of the people of Ireland. I think if you stand in front of a Vermeer painting, you'll be struck quite often by how modest the size of the picture is. If you then begin to think about how that picture's composed, it's the lady writing the letter, but she's on the right-hand side. The person in the middle of the painting is the maid standing behind her. But she's in the middle of the painting, but she's not the central figure, or is she a central figure? But what she does is give the picture an extraordinary solidity, and she gives us a, a real sort of axis of calm around which all of the psychological thoughts that we might have or interpretations we might put into this scene uh, revolve. This beautiful, uh, calm, controlled environment, this very expensive interior with its marble floor and its Delft tile skirting, and, and I think, oh, so, but somebody's thrown this on the floor. It shouldn't be there. So you realise, well, and did she get a letter that she threw away and then started to write a reply and seal it and then decided that wasn't going to be the right answer and flung it down again? You know, so you start to question. And then you have a painting on the back wall. And, of course, we know that paintings on the wall in Dutch... 17th century interiors aren't just arbitrary, they're there for a reason. And we have a painting of the finding of Moses. We know it was interpreted as divine providence. So what is happening in the painting? What's the turmoil then we begin to sense in this lady's mind as she's furiously head bent trying to write the letter? And meanwhile, her maid is impassively standing there, looking, completely looking out the window with her arms crossed, patiently waiting to be given the letter to, to deliver. Anybody who's, you know, doing a course that I would teach in creative writing, I send them to the gallery to have a look, because what I'm going to do after they come back and 
recreate what they saw is just ask them things. Ask them basic questions, basic questions. And with Vermeer, he's persistently in the business of asking questions. He puts an enormous emphasis on the viewer's own imaginative ability. And he doesn't overfeed us. It's just the right amount of information. And yes, it is a frustrating experience to watch him, but the joy of frustration is that, um, you know, I love this, what was it Oscar Wilde said, the suspense is killing me, I hope it lasts. And that's what you feel about Vermeer.